move on to our next speaker. Uh, the next speaker we have with us today is uh, Dr. A.G. Sasahara. Uh, he is the member of the European Connected Health Alliance. Dr. A.G. Sasahara, a partner of the Healthcare Cloud Initiative, Vice Chair of Healthcare IT Subcommittee at the American Chamber of Commerce in Japan, and representative of the Board of Directors at the Cloud Security Alliance Japan chapter, is currently focusing on raising awareness and promoting initiatives for utilizing ICT in pharmaceutical and medical industries. Dr. Sasahara has experience in clinical research uh, regarding team-based care for outpatient chemotherapy using health IT jointly with the St. Luke's International Hospital, Tokyo. He holds a BA from Tokyo University and MBA from Boston University Graduate School of Management and a PhD in Medical and Pharmaceutical Scientist, uh, Sciences from Chiba University Graduate School of Medical and Pharmaceutical Scientist, uh, Sciences. His views on IT utilization issues have often been quoted by major publications such as Asahi Shimbun, Mainichi Shimbun, uh, Nikkei Shimbun, Nikkei BP, and Tokyo Kezai. He's a very powerful candidate to speak for us today uh, in healthcare, uh, cloud security, or digital health, and many others. Uh, Sasahara san is also uh, the sensei of our next speaker, uh, Dr. Suresh. Uh, in fact, it was uh, because of Sasahara san that uh, Dr. Suresh uh, got into the field of healthcare IT. Uh, we welcome you, Sasahara San. Thank you so much for being a part uh, of our summit. Uh, Sasahara San would be speaking on secure distributed cloud platform for micro health services in remote settings, uh, Japan's expertise. You, you can now share your screen, Sasahara San. Oh, can you hear me? Yes, sir. So, uh, my name is Eiji Sasahara. I'm from Tokyo, Japan. Uh, thank you very much for uh, inviting me to the uh, such a big, uh, excellent uh, conference. Thank you so much, sir, for being a yes. part of this. We, we are very honored. So, uh, okay, yes. So, and, um, and uh, to tell the truth, I went to Taipei in 2017, and this, I, I, I listened to the uh, presentation by Dr. Lee. Yeah. And in 2019, I visited uh, uh, Dr. Suresh's office in Hyderabad. So, so my role is to uh, combine uh, Passing from Dr. Lee in AI and uh, uh, passing from uh, Dr. Suresh in telemedicine and uh, remote care with a uh, uh, cloud infrastructure. Uh, so today, uh, I like to, at first I'd like to introduce uh, three use cases from. Uh, in, from the mobile health and telemedicine in Japan. Uh, after that, I uh, I had uh, a technic, uh, technically uh, perspective uh, on the cloud, cloud computing and uh, cloud security issue. As I, and so. Yes. Uh, at first, I, I'd like to introduce a use case in 
Kobe City, Japan. This is a, a personal health record, so PHR, uh, developed and managed by the Kobe City government. So developers include Riken Kobe. Riken Kobe is a national institute in, in Kobe and uh, private companies such, such as Lincoln Communications, Fujitsu. Uh, the target, from the region, target is a uh, citizen. And there is about 1 million people living in Kobe City. And next this year, uh, the promise uh, started to target uh, corporate employees in, uh, within Kobe City. What they uh, gather is, is uh, so as Dr. Lee mentioned, so uh, early area. So yeah, this so they, they, uh, this program are collected has created data such as weight, height, or like this, and also they are gathering information about food or physical exercise. Uh, that it. Yes, and uh, now uh, now they are uh, trying to uh, develop some kind of. Healthy life consultation utilizing ICT. And uh, this is a sample of the screen uh, by text or text messengers or uh, 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 online consultation. And uh, so, as maybe this is not the case with uh, uh, COVID city, so maybe behavior change is a key for the area, yeah, uh, area and area. Yes, and so. Uh, regarding from the, uh, this is maybe the, the next step for them. So is to how to uh, motivate or behavior change with gamification or data storytelling, some kind of AR, VR, or uh, after COVID nineteen. So social distancing is a critical issue for them. And so it's like like this. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe maybe so. Uh, of course, AI technology is a, a key in, in those areas. So maybe it's integration of uh, knowledge from the. Dr. Lee and so uh, technology and skill and technology in the from Suresh Sensei will be gathered, I hope, even in Kobe City. And the next is so, uh, since in COVID 19, um, as many countries, particularly in Europe, Europe uh, uh, many countries are developing a so called, so called contact tracing application. Yeah, yes, in Japan, uh, the, the so-called COCOA uh, was de developed and uh, managed by the Minister, uh, the Minister of Health, Labor, and Welfare, uh, the government. And uh, this is a screen from the uh, web page, website and available on iOS and Android OS smartphones and adapting, as you may know, Apple and Google API for exposure notifying framework. In addition, in Japan, uh, this this system is using Microsoft Azure, yeah, so-called yeah, cloud computing technologies. So, and this is a, a sample from the GitHub. Uh, so you can see uh, this uh, information for, for sort of, yeah, uh, this this other Cocoa MHHW slash Cocoa. Uh, this is open to public. So if you are interested in the uh, Cocoa. Uh, uh, from perspective of engineer, engineering, please see the, this source code. Yes, and this, and this is also, uh, this, also uh, this is from the telemedicine. Um, after, uh, uh, during the, uh, the lock, lockdown uh, due to COVID-19, so needs to uh, consult, uh, uh, remote consultations are increasing and the Japanese government deregulate uh, uh, regulations to ease uh, 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 online consultation uh, uh, applicable. Uh, this is a uh, so list of uh, startup companies uh, with focusing on uh, telemedicine. Get to, yeah, this now. So something yeah, there are something uh, their solutions uh, look similar. However, their background is quite different. For example, uh, in case of integrity healthcare, this is uh, the company is established by Dr. Muto. He's a physician and, and, and he, he works for, at, worked at uh, uh, East Japan after a quick tsunami. Yeah, and after his, his experience, he uh, established the company. So and, uh, in the center, the MICIN, this is called Mycin. Mycin is established by the EX, uh, 
McKinsey consultant. He's also a physician. So this is another case. Those are companies are now increasing. However, of course, uh, uh, Japanese and startup companies has uh, uh, challenges. Yeah, as I mentioned, so yeah, uh, market driver is a deregulation and uh, of course development of medical IoT, particularly internet of things like this. And uh, so, and online doctor consultation tools are very uh, market expanding. So, so now next opportunity is in the, uh, and, uh, in the in the again, aging committees in Japan, so integrated medical nursing care is a critical issue for the whole for us. So maybe uh, this is a big opportunity to uh, expand telemedicine. In addition, uh, uh, as I as I explain our data, but uh, uh, telemedicine is uh, also the integration of information technology and operation technology, uh, so IT OT convergence. This is also in, from technology perspective, they have big opportunities. However, yes, yes, and the challenge is, uh, is here and, and uh, why is so? So money around the paper-based process, this is a heavy headache for us. It is not uh, 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 do new, uh, new thing without the yeah, uh, paper. Such a case, yeah. and, and also, so, Final yeah, uh, challenge is uh, lack of medical security experts, particularly inside hospital. Uh, uh, this is a critical issue. So how to yeah, get uh, high or higher uh, security experts is a critical issue for us. Um, from the, uh, this part, I would like to explain about, next is, uh, oh, oh, so, uh, I just explain about so future technology of Japanese government, but infrastructure. Now, uh, the Japanese government is uh, declared society 5.0 strategy. Uh, so this is this is uh, this is uh, this uh, is uh, society 4.0 is uh, uh, as you know the cloud computing and uh, this is so uh, operation. But so. However, uh, there is no integration between cyberspace and physical space, such, such a different. However, uh, uh, utilizing IoT uh, technologies, so it is quite, it's, it's quite possible that we can we, we integrate phys, uh, physical space and cyber space, so so-called ITOT integration. Uh, this is a key message from the Society for 5.0. Yes, in addition, and uh, this is a uh, uh, also Japanese government's another, another uh, strategy. Uh, now Japanese government is in, trying to, starting to implement super city uh, strategy. Uh, under under new strategy, uh, they are focusing focusing so API driven data exchange infrastructure uh, on national strategic specialist zone such as. Uh, Kansai or Tokyo, uh, Yokohama or something like this, so specific zone. And as you see, this is also, there are three uh, layer, both service applications and citizen OS, operation systems and digital data. Uh, those layers are uh, integrated by API. So, so API is critically uh, the key factor in the uh, connected uh, infrastructure in Japan. This is so uh, general. Uh, perspective. And on the other hand, so, so outside Japan, so already some uh, people are, are considering to implement yeah, uh, such uh, technologies. So this is, uh, the, uh, do you know here, fog computing? So fog computing is, uh, so something like an integrated layer uh, between Cloud and cloud, IT driven cloud and uh, OT driven smart and devices. So to connect to, to uh, those layers, it's essential to integrate IT and OT. To do so, this is a model by US NIST. And uh, so, so by utilizing uh, whole computing, uh, it, is, it, is, it is easier to expand uh, potential in AI and uh, telehealth or telemedicine 
to enhance for the health care. Uh, this, yeah, uh, this is uh, not, not, this is a global uh, research team uh, conducted uh, this uh, paper and uh, this is a typical case of use case on health care. Uh, as you know, yes, as you see, yeah, the layer re uh, for, for computing uh, uh, cloud and uh, edge side. So how to integrate uh, with infrastructure is a key issue for the, uh, not only Japan, for, but also all over the world. And finally, I'd like to uh, add uh, security and privacy uh, perspective. Recently, so, so in India, India uh, uh, pr uh, Prime Minister Modi, uh, I, I mentioned about yeah, so this uh, has uh, initiative to uh, to uh, develop yeah, some kind of uh, first AI, first ID, ID car, so to do so, uh, maybe security and privacy issues. Uh, very, very important. So maybe so, however, after COVID-19, it is not easy to yeah, uh, enhance so security and privacy. So in that means at in the world of cloud computing, so uh, providers are utilizing application containers and microservice technologies. So uh, in this, uh, in this uh, figure, this is a developer, developer and testing accommodation after that, so internal registry for the in, uh, some kind of uh, internet and external registry for the inter, inter, internet. So someone yeah, to orchestrate the orchestrator is rules of uh, harmonization and there is different host uh, application. Uh, and uh, how to, yeah, how to uh, operate those process with uh, uh, automation technologies, including AI is also a critical issue in the piece of uh, cyber security. Uh, this is my fi uh, final slide, and uh, uh, in the field of yeah, of, uh, this is a typical case of uh, is, uh, infrastructure structure of the uh, container uh, subs container microservice architecture. Uh, upper, uh, upper layer, this is an application and API uh, OS, and and the, and, and the underside uh, hypervisor storage network. Yeah, this is a more and more hardware side. Uh, from the perspective of cybersecurity, uh, there are two uh, big issues. Uh, in, uh, one is the uh, issues in, inside the upper layer, so application side, uh, uh, such a, uh, so so-called uh, security by design, or privacy by design, or identity and access management. This is a critical issue for the uh, cybersecurity. On the other hand, so traditional, uh, IAS PASAS is actually uh, uh, developed uh, harmonization in the, uh, those side. So, uh, so regarding privacy, so data protection is a critical issue, uh, particularly in the uh, countries of the EU. Uh, so GDPR or, or in US as FIPA uh, to, uh, for compliance issue for, so data security is a critical issue and particularly so, uh, encryption is a tech key. On the other hand, yes, and infrastructure strategy, including networking or uh, like some mobile or G, uh, 5G like, like this, this is so expanding. So uh, this is my uh, final uh, slide and uh, there are so two uh, layer now. And, and uh, I would say that uh, even uh, in Japan, uh, we can find a lot of opportunities uh, in for the engineers and uh, so and maybe and also we have a, a lot of issues in cyber security and privacy issues however uh, the lack of engineers and lack of uh, cyber security experts are critical issue in uh, uh so aging society in japan so, so, so that the population is decreasing so i hope that many people many engineers and uh, many talents will enter the Japanese market to support us. Uh, this is my uh, final message. Thank you very much for your, your presentation. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Sasahara-san. This was very informative, especially uh, for the uh, engineers, as you said. Uh, we, have, we have a lot of engineers here in India. 
as you know and we have a very young population i think what you said is going to motivate uh, the engineers to try and look for work over there in japan yeah yes so sasara san there is one uh, question uh, with regards uh, to the uh, uh, telehealth or telemedicine system in uh, in uh, japan or tokyo as such so there are uh, several organizations uh, in india a few startups yeah. uh, who are in the uh, telehealth and telemedicine area who want to yeah. explore the japan market they want to get yeah. the japan market uh, so uh, because we know that japan has a uh, aging population and we think that uh, because they already they already have the system developed it will be yeah. uh, helpful uh, to the people over there and it will be a good business opportunity uh, yes. could you could you please uh, uh, you know help us uh, a little in understanding uh what are the regulatory requirements or how difficult is it or how easy is it for any um, telehealth or telemedicine company from other countries to get into a japan market what are the regulatory requirements we should uh, have in mind so so i am so many so many so so, so japanese regulation is based on uh Many are the paper-based processes. Yes. So, yes. So, uh, however, yeah. So uh, there's, there's a big difference between uh, large, large, inter large hospitals and small clinics. Okay. So, so maybe so small clinics are sim maybe similar to the uh, clinics in India. Okay. So yeah. So, yeah. uh, Sarah San, uh, uh, also the question is like uh, in in Japan also if a patient is going to a clinic. Uh, yeah. uh they make the payment directly or is there a national healthcare scheme where the government pays the uh, doctor in the clinic so uh, currently there is no gp uh, general patient uh, gp system in japan so okay. You know, okay so so it is free uh, free access to the uh, for hospitals and uh, uh, clinics Okay. Okay. So, any uh, tele uh, health or tele medicine uh, organization that wants to establish itself uh, in the Japan market, uh, they will have to build a security uh, cloud security because data is all going to go into the cloud and the payment system based on the government regulation of the country. Yes. Uh, yes. And um, yeah. And um, yeah. Um, now, so. The, the Japanese government uh, started uh, started uh, some kind of uh, uh, cloud security certification system for the government cloud, so called ISMAP. Okay. Okay. So yeah, this is maybe this is this, um, this is very useful. Yeah, for the Indian startups to uh, run. Yeah, what are, uh, what are the requirements for the Japanese government uh, in the cloud security such as yes. Yes, yes, Sahara mm -hmm. So there are a few of our participants who are actually uh, a part of uh, uh, telehealth and telemedicine or startups in India, and they yeah. were uh, wanting some advice from you as to how to enter the Japan market. How can they enter the Japan market? Yes, and the addition, so so the Japanese government has a uh, 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 regional office of Jetro. Uh, in India, such as maybe Mumbai or Bangalore, such yeah, in uh, Delhi. So, mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, so now uh, Jetro is very very aggressive to uh, support Indian startups to enter the Japanese market. Uh, under yeah, under the government. Yeah. So I would like to introduce uh, introduce Jetro. Okay. People, yeah, to the uh, to save. Uh, startups in India. Okay. Uh, Sasar San, there is one question from one of our panelists, uh, Mr. David. Uh, so uh, his question is that uh, I have read uh, that in Japan, doctors are more involved in helping to improve new innovations. Uh, so how do doctors in Japan help in uh, uh, approving new innovations, what is the role of doctors in uh, approving any new innovation that comes into the Japan market? 
uh, if if you have uh, any response to that. So now, yeah. So interesting. Interesting is that so uh, young generation doctors are establishing uh, uh, their own uh, startups, medtech or health tech startups. Okay. And, yeah. So yeah. So now they are uh, developing a network to uh, share you uh, share knowledge and uh, and technique to uh, our uh, regulation regulation issues. So. Now, so, so Dr. Suresh uh, graduates from uh, Tokyo uh, Medical and Men Dental University in Tokyo, and, uh, and his uh, university is, is also establishing a uh, uh, supporting program to support physicians in innovation. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you uh, so much, uh, Sasara San, for your time and such valuable information, especially the questions that came at the end of it. I think they were so useful. And uh, definitely, we are going to pass your message to uh, all the engineers we know over here to, to look for opportunities over there where it is going to be very useful. Thank you so much for your time, Sasara San. You're welcome.